there. Welcome back to History and Philosophy of Science and Medicine. I'm Matt Brown. Today we're talking about race in medicine. The primary question for our discussion today is, should race be used as a variable in biomedical research? In the background of this question, you know, is something that you probably already know about. There are major health disparities by race, not just in terms of broad outcomes of mortality, morbidity, and, and uh, general health, but on specific diseases, there are uh, different outcomes differentiated by race. And this causes a lot of folks to want to think about what is the role of race um, in health and um, how can we study it? You should think about this question, should race be used as a variable in biomedical research um, as having two sides to it, right? One is an ethical side, right? Um, is it ethically right um, or uh, permissible at least to, to use race in that way as a variable, as a, as a, as a thing that we, we track and measure? Um, and also an epistemological aspect to this, right? Is it something that leads biomedical research to better knowledge or is it something that leads it astray? And as uh, you know, you might expect, given some of our previous discussions, that's not really a sharp dichotomy. The ethical and the epistemic aspects of this question mix. And you really need to think about both and the, the way they relate to one another to come to an answer to the question. Right. If you answer yes to the question, yet yes, race should be used as a variable in biomedical research, the position is sometimes what's called conservationism. Right. Um, that is, we 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 conserve the notion of race, right, um, or, or the concept of race within our, our research context. If you answer no to the question, then you are uh, then that position is known as eliminativism, and uh, basically it means you know we want to eliminate the concept of race from biomedical research. So those are the positions. There are obviously um, nuances within and between the positions, um, and we'll get into some of that uh, here in this lecture and, and some of it in our discussion today. Let's start with the question, what is race? What is this concept of race? Obviously, to some extent, it's a value-laden concept, right? So as we talked about last week with, uh, with thick concepts and, and mixed claims, the concept of race, with all of its historical baggage of racism and white supremacy uh, as the history sort of behind it, um, and all of the positive and negative sort of roles that race plays in our uh, politics and our society, um, you're not going to escape thinking about the, the value-ladenness of the term, right? Um, uh, at least not not, not and have an adequate conception. Now, a lot of our thinking about race follows just a conventional definition, uh, like what you see in the census and what's defined by the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget in the United States government. Uh, it gives, the, it gives a, a, a number of categories, right? Five categories. Uh, they are American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and white, right? Now, obviously, these categories are very U.S.-centric, right? Um, they're they're uh, somewhat focused on uh, how we describe different groups within the United States. Um, they also roughly correspond with continental populations, right? So um, American Indian or Alaska Native is um, sort of indigenous Americans, uh, North, North and maybe South America. Uh, Asian, obviously, uh, comes from Asia. Black or African American, um, we're referring to the descendants of African continental populations, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander, um, and then white, presumably, we're looking at European um, historical populations. Um, but that said, I mean, um, those don't perfectly line up with historical and ge geographic, geographical anthropological history. So um, it's just a convention, right? And, and, and in the guidelines, they in fact say this is, this is partly just a social convention, right? Um, 
Another historically important concept of race is um, what we might call racial naturalism or racialism or essentialism. And this is, you know, this is the discredited historical concept of race in which there are these major biologically grounded differences between different races. Um, this, this concept, I think, fails for a number of reasons. One of them is if you, if you look at the genetics, it's what, uh, uh, what's referred to in the article as um, Lewontin's argument, right? If you look within a population, a, a, a racial group, that population has a great amount of genetic variation. If you look across racial groups, uh, at the at the whole range of differences, there's not much differences from one group to another. Obviously, there are some differences, um, but they're relatively minor and superficial. Another view of what race is um, is uh, just a, just the idea that race is a biological fiction. It's a social construction, right? It doesn't really exist except as a social category, right? There are certain kinds of um, there are certain ways in which we categorize people based on superficial characteristics and, and history, but ultimately uh, there's, there's nothing, there's no biological reality there. And then finally, another view that's discussed uh, and, and to some extent dis de defended in Andreessen's article is the biosocial view, which says it's a mix of some genetic biological factors and some social factors that make up race, right? Um, and, and often uh, those who subscribe to the biosocial view will use more modern, more recent genetic techniques to argue that there are actually clusters of um, genetic correlations that you can kind of associate with racial groups um, in order to pick out populations that actually aren't that different from the OMB conventional populations. Um, although, of course, that's to some extent um, uh, controversial. And one thing I think it's important to note is although it's, it's important to, to think about what we mean by race, what race is, um, in uh, thinking about whether we should use it as a variable in biomedicine, views of race don't perfectly map onto the question, right? That, so, so whether you're a, a, um, a social constructivist, uh, a biosocial view person, or, or even if you subscribe to racialism, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should or shouldn't it doesn't necessarily prescribe a view about whether we should use race as a variable in biomedical research because, you know, race may have, race may be real, it may exist, right? Um, but not have any significant information, you know, not, may not be informative for, for the causes of disease. That's a possibility, right? Similarly, um, race could be totally a, a social construction, totally a biological fiction, and yet there would be reasons you want to keep track of it in biomedical research. So, so really, we need to think about, to some extent, how race is measured, and, and then largely how the race um, might be used to keep track of important information in biological research, um, and what problems might arise if we use it in that way, in order to weigh the pros and cons of, of um, eliminativism and conservationism. So against the notion of using race in medical research, one of the major um, arguments is simply that the use of race in research tends to reify race, tends to support the racial naturalist position that um, certain, you know, parts of our society are just already predisposed to believe, right? So. Um, so insofar as, you know, we are tracking race and correlating race and we are reporting, you know, racial differences in susceptibility to diseases like diabetes or sickle cell anemia, it tends to make race seem more real, right? Um, and that actually can mislead or, or be harmful. Another idea against is that measuring race itself is somewhat unreliable, right? So we, we've... I gave you sort of the categories of race that are used for federal purposes um, uh, a moment ago, 
but um, those don't come with any criteria that specify how you determine which race someone is. In fact, the only thing that you really have is self-identification, right? What race do, does the, the person you're um, you know, asking identify with, right? One of the nice things about the, the relatively newer way of, of uh, doing this is um, that, number one, it is self-identification rather than other identification, right, which can be more problematic, right? So it's not up to the scientist to assign a race to you based on whatever, whatever they are basing it on. It's up to you as the, as the person being measured to, to specify. Um, and also you can, you can check more than one box, so to speak, right? So it, it does naturally accommodate um, mixed race identified people. But that said, the reasons that uh, person A might identify uh, as say Asian and person B might identify as Asian um, may not be the same, right? Um, someone may uh, focus on their ancestry. Another person may focus on their appearance, right? And, and those things don't generate the same answer. So there may be some unreliability in the measurement. Although there are arguments that it's, it's not as bad as it, as it might sound, right? That, that actually it, it tracks fairly well. Um, another argument is that um, race gets confounded with a bunch of other factors that might be more directly influential on health outcomes and disease etiology, right? So uh, an obvious one is racism, right? Um, if, you, uh, are, uh, if you are a member of a certain racial group, you're more likely to, or, or you, you're inevitably going to experience some racism. And that might have negative health outcomes, right, on its own. Um, but you can't really pull apart uh, very, very reliably those two variables. Um, there tends to be a kind of suite of socioeconomic and environmental factors also that you can sometimes but not always pull apart. A related concern that many researchers have is that um, Really, when it comes to understanding the causes of disease and of health, um, individual context, the context of an individual subject or patient is always going to be more useful than gross generalizations about racial groups that are, you know, internally diverse groups of people. Um, and so you're, it's, it's kind of unnecessary and, and the, uh, the focus leads us away from what we need to focus on, which is more individual context. One problem with that notion is that individual context is actually quite hard to study, right? Um, we tend to, uh, as a matter of, of methodological necessity, focus on groups of people whose characteristics we can specify um, and, and broad generalizations about the groups. You know, with, with, you know, we also include information about the variance across the group, right? Um, but it's, it's really, you know, it's really hard in a context where you focus on these large medical trials as your main form of evidence to, to, to say much that's interesting about individual context. So that's, that's, a, that's a difficulty. Those who are for the use of the variable of race in medicine have a variety of different um, uh, reasons. And in, in fact, um, they may disagree with one another in part based on, you know, some, some are, uh, have a totally social concept of race, others have more of the biosocial concept of race, um, and uh, uh, those groups are sometimes gonna have different notions of why we might still wanna keep track of race. So, um, you know, one very prominent view is that, uh, you know, racial disparities are real, right? Racial disparities in health outcomes are real. They're typically unjust, right? Um, and you need to be able to track them if you want to fight that injustice, right? If you, want to, if you want to deal with that injustice, you have to actually know what the disparities are. So you have to keep measuring them, right? Um, that, even if you don't think race is biologically real, um, that's a good reason to think about why you should keep track of race in biomedical research.
Another aspect, another view, which is more on the biosocial view, uh, side of things, is that um, uh, you know some diseases have fairly clear genetic origins, genetic etiology, or or genetic associations, right? So, diseases like Tay-Sachs disease, um, diseases like sickle cell anemia, uh, and a variety of others have fairly simple um, genetic uh, explanations. And um, those, those sort of, um, the genetic factors might differ in prevalence between racial groups. And in fact, there's evidence for some of these that there is a sort of difference in prevalence between racial groups. So um, because race is, is related in, in the, um, especially in the minds of those with the biosocial view, with these sort of um, ancestral populations that are reproductively isolated from one another and so have some genetic differences, this could be relevant. Um, others have disputed whether there, there are really significant um, genetic, uh, uh, genetic differences along these lines. Obviously, it's an empirical question um, and, you know, one one argument in favor of, of um, continuing to measure race is that it leaves open the possibility, right, to discovery, right? Um, the last sort of notion for, of why we might want to measure race in biomedical research is that race could be a, a useful surrogate variable, even if it is not a sort of a biological reality and even if it's not perfectly correlated, correlated with the underlying factors that do cause disease. And this, I think, goes to the, the notion of, of, um, of value-laden concepts or mixed claims, right? Because racial groupings are, are social groupings that we care about. We care about them because often we politically identify uh, uh, with a racial group, especially members of marginalized racial groups have solidarity with each other. Um, we have a history of racism and white supremacy in the United States and globally that um, has generated a variety of racial injustices. And so insofar as racial groupings um, stand in for a whole suite of uh, intersecting factors having to do with social discrimination, uh, socioeconomic status, geographical distribution. You know, we still have housing discrimination in a lot of cities in the United States. So, so, um, so different racial populations live in different places. Um, uh, environmental factors, including environmental racism, all of these things intersect in ways that cause disease profiles that are unique. And these are things we care about because we care about race, if only to fight racial injustice, right? So it's not just that we want to, you know, track the disparities because we want to fight them, but also we're interested in how this sort of suite of factors that tracks um, a concept that we care about is affecting people's health, right? Um, and and how it, it, you know, in some sense, this sort of shifts our notion of what the, the fundamental or most important causes are from a purely sort of biological understanding of what the disease factors are to a, to a socially focused um, uh, notion of what the important factors are. Um, and that's a different way of sort of cutting up the causal space that actually might be more useful to us. Okay, so that's a kind of detailed, um, but I hope helpful uh, introduction to this topic. Um, you know, ultimately the question, we have, to, we have to try to integrate all these different considerations, all the ethical and uh, epistemic um, considerations that are raised and the intersection between them in order to try to answer this question. Um, so that's, uh, that's the introduction to race and medicine. I look forward to talking about this with you more on Discord or in our class meeting today, um, or I'd be happy to uh, answer questions in the comments of the video uh, and, and hear your thoughts. 
Um, this is our last topic for this semester's discussion. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you. And uh, I uh, want to wish you luck on your exams and have a great summer. Uh, I'll see you in class or I'll see you sometime in the future. Bye.